This is Marin Biology. My name is Charlie, and today we have part two of our comparison of the Malatek Omega Vibe and the Marimbo One Vibe. In case you missed part one, I'll put a link in that in the description below. And remember, we're keeping score Hogwarts style. This year's House Cup will be between the House of Stevens and the House of Samuels. To my ears, the One Vibe has a little bit more consistent sound from bottom to top. The Omega gets a little bit fuzzy due to how the dampening mechanism is working. I noticed when reviewing the footage that the dampener pad on the Omega Vibe didn't quite make it all the way to the end of that top F. I looked on the bottom and there's a little bit extra down there and the whole dampener pad is velcroed on, so I'm going to experiment with moving it down a little bit and see if I can get full coverage which should help out in that top octave a little bit more. So the Omega has a bit of a darker sound, and the One Vibe has a bit of a brighter sound. And I'm not sure if this is because of the way the bars are tuned, or the resonators are tuned, or because the One Vibe has fans inside of the resonators, and the Omega has wings that sit on top of the resonators. I'm not really sure, but both sound pretty good. It's just a matter of personal taste. One of the biggest strengths of the Omega is that you can do a lot with half pedaling. Half pedaling is when you press down the pedal a little bit to get a more sustained than a dry sound, but not quite as much as a full open sound. This is one area that the Omega really shines because it has that U-shaped gel dampener pad. So there's a lot of flexibility in how much you're half pedaling and how long you can get the notes to ring. Now the One Vibe and all felt dampener vibes they have the ability to half pedal, but there's much less flexibility. There's like a very small window that you can press down the pedal and get a little bit of muffling, but it's a very small window and it's easy to overshoot. I feel like with the Omega, it's much easier to customize how long you want the bars to ring. You can't see in this clip, but on the One Vibe, I had to try about three different times to get it just right in the exact right position. The mics didn't pick this up too well, but the One Vibe motor is much quieter. However, unless you're miking really close or you're in a recording studio, no one's going to be able to hear the motor of either of these instruments except for the person playing them. Overall, the Omega produced a much more round and even sounding vibrato, and it was so much different than the vibrato on the One Vibe, I had to look at the sound file to see what was going on. As you can see, the Omega fans are open more than they are closed. The shape is very similar to a sine wave. The One Vibe is closed more than it is open. This makes a very deep wobble to the vibrato, which personally I don't like. I'm going to give this one to the Omega.
The One Vibe is capable of going much slower and much faster than the Omega Vibe motor. And I'm not sure if the Omega Vibe, if it's a limitation of the design and how the wings are moving, or the motor that they're using, or maybe they've deliberately capped the speed so that it can't go very fast. But in either case, the One Vibe is a little bit more flexible in this regard. I don't know if anyone's gonna use a super slow vibrato, but the really fast vibrato is really reminiscent of that like classic old school vibraphone sound. And if you wanna emulate that sound, the Omega Vibe just cannot do it. So when I called Steve Weiss to order this instrument, I was really on the fence of which one to get, and he told me that the One Vibe had a lot of frame noise issues that the Omega didn't have. Maybe they were working with an earlier model, but I've found the opposite actually to be true in my sound test. If you're not wearing headphones or earbuds, you probably can't hear the frame noise because it's a fairly low frequency. So I'm gonna go ahead and artificially boost the low frequencies so you can hear the frame noise a little bit better. Now it should be noted, this is another one of those things that you're going to hear as the player, but unless you're miking the instrument closely, no one else is going to hear it if they're standing more than a couple feet away from you. But it is remarkable how quiet the One Vibe is. So... Both instruments have a really unique sound to them. I really love how warm the Omega Vibe is, especially on pedaled notes. The One Vibe has an amazingly clear staccato, 
especially in the high register where the Omega struggles with frame noise and dampening issues, the One Vibe really sings in that upper register. Before our final score can be given, it seems we have a few last minute adjustments. The Omega Vibe features fixed resonators, or if you pay an extra additional cost, you can get tunable resonators. Now I've done a lot of testing with this, and it seems that on vibraphone having tunable resonators isn't as big of a deal as on a marimba because the bars ring for so long. It's, it's, it's less of a difference when you mess around with the tuning. On a marimba, it's much more crucial, especially because the marimba bars are made of wood, and if one bar starts to go out of tune a little bit, it doesn't match the resonator and the resonance is cut down, so you can adjust the resonator to match. But vibraphones are made out of aluminum. I highly doubt they're going to go out of tune anytime soon. But still, having the tunable resonators is nice. The One Vibe comes with a cover, and the Omega Vibe does not. I think this is a huge oversight in Malatek's part, because I can't tell you how many times I've been on a gig, and somebody will come up and start touching my bars with their fingers, or their fingernails, or I even had a guy come over with a quarter one time and start banging on my marimba bars with a quarter. That's a story for another time. But the fact of the matter is, even if you're in a well-cultured environment like an art opening, true story, the second you walk away from your instrument, people are gonna come over and start trying to touch it unless you've got some bodyguards or something standing nearby. So to be able to put a cover on top, ultimately, is gonna keep people from doing that. And I think all vibraphone and marimba manufacturers need to include a cover. Now apparently, I looked on the Steve Wyatt's website and you can buy a Maltec cover for $85 but it should have been included. Both manufacturers offer cases for their vibraphones, and I haven't seen either one of these in real life, but I do have the Marimba One cases for the Marimba, and they're really awesome, so I can't wait to get a look at them and see how well they're designed. So a little bit about customer service. I had a couple issues with both my Marimba One Marimba and my Malatech Omega Vibe, and both companies went above and beyond to help me solve the issues, or sending me parts to replace, or things to try, to, to alleviate some of the problems I was having. And I might make another video based on that later, but both companies went above and beyond to make sure I was satisfied as the customer. And this is really important because I don't think you're gonna get that level of service from some of the bigger companies like Yamaha or Adams. Maybe I'm wrong, I've never ordered uh, an instrument from them before, but it seems to me like a huge company like Yamaha, for example, that makes everything under the sun, including motorcycles and whatever, you know, to get a hold of somebody who can really help you with one particular vibraphone issue uh, is probably unlikely. I could be wrong though, if you're a Yamaha rep, feel free to comment in the comments below. But the customer service for both Marimba One and Malatech have been really stellar, and I've been super happy with that. And now let's talk about price. If you want a vibe with a motor, the Omega Vibe is gonna be about $5,000. The One Vibe is $4,500, on every website except Steve Weiss, which for some reason is $4,850. In any case, the One Vibe can be had for $500 cheaper and it includes a cover. This year's House Cup is awarded to the House of Samuels. Congratulations. In all seriousness though, the One Vibe gives you more bells and whistles and at a lower cost. It should be noted that both of these instruments are really great and really above and beyond what the rest of the market is doing with vibraphones right now. A lot of my scoring system is personal taste and your taste may be different. However, I feel like I can recommend a different instrument to people who have different needs. So for the Omega Vibe, if you like a dark sound, if you like a really smooth, even sounding vibrato, if you like having a lot of control when half pedaling, or if you want tunable resonators, that could be the instrument for you. For the One Vibe, if you like a really bright and crispy sound, especially in the high register, if you like a very fast vibrato, if you mic very close to the bars and you want to minimize your frame noise and your motor noise, if you're in an education setting and you need to move the height constantly, I can't tell you how invaluable that gas lift is and how easy it makes it to adjust the height of the instrument. And lastly, if you like your wallet, I would recommend the One Vibe. All right, everybody, this video took a ton of time and effort to produce. If you enjoyed it or you thought it was helpful, 
please click that subscribe and thumb button because it helps this video go higher in the search rankings. So if someone else is looking for advice on which one to buy, they're more likely to find the video. All right, guys, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.